Hi, I'm Sean Clark. Today I'm standing in front of Caleb's house from the 1987 vampire horror classic Near Dark. Welcome to Horse Hall Grounds. So right here, this slab of concrete, this was the store. This is where he first sees her. So they pull up in their truck over here, and there, there was a bar that was right here. You son of a bitch. Go ahead. Okay, come on. Go ahead. Come on. So they pull up over here, and they see her in front of this store. What are you looking at? Turn around and feast your eyes. It's right about here where she comes out. And famously eating that ice cream cone. I'm dreaming. Oh, you can go ahead and keep on dreaming, son. <laughs> Would you look at him? Have a bite. It's dying for a cone. Dying. You're from around here, are you? No. So, tell me a little bit about your connection to the near dark. Uh, my grandmother owned the house. And I grew up my you know, visiting my grandmother. And my grandmother passed, my brother was living there with his then current wife when the movie set approached them somehow. I don't know why, but cut some kind of a deal with them and relocated them to a motel while they did the shooting. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I passed by there being a farmer and right farm ground around them. I passed by and just kind of be nosy. And, my brother shared periodically uh, bits and pieces, but basically he wasn't allowed in the house or whatever. And, and uh, then it was kind of a deal for Coolidge to uh, have that tanker truck blow up, a little filming there on uh, Main Street and, and uh, Coolidge Avenue. And so it was kind of a deal that Coolidge people would watch. I hadn't seen the movie at all until maybe three months ago, and I just happened to bump into it on <laughs> TV. And I watched it and... and What'd you think of it? Goofy. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you could tell it was a low budget film, but yeah. uh, trying to recognize inside the house and so on, I, I could recognize parts of it, but color what, changes. And what so. part? What parts of the house uh, did they use from what you, from what I, you saw? I saw the stairway going upstairs. Mm -hmm. The front living room. Uh, there's no additions to the house or anything. The, the original structure is the same as it is today. Mm -hmm. Col color scheme, the movie changed color scheme of certain rooms. The house has not changed external looks at all. Okay. And nothing's been done internally. Yeah. What about the uh, when they were sitting there having their meal? It's a very small kitchen and dining area, and I don't recall. I didn't. Yeah, a lot of time I was trying to figure out because you know you you um, you add stuff to movies. You yeah. shoot a scene and add it, and I was just start trying to. And the colors have changed. It kind of thrown me for a loop. But mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. it was an interesting experience. And in the driveway, they had. Uh, 
a food wagon, a buffet type thing for yeah. the employees. And I stopped in there a few times and said, yeah, go ahead and make yourself a plate of food. And I'd make a sandwich or whatever. Mm -hmm. but, so this field's yours here? No. Oh. This is mine. Oh, this so that, that's your field? Oh, okay. Well, to the settlement. Now from the house to yeah, Is this growing anything? No. It's just it's just dirt right now? Yeah. You see where this texture changes a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then walk down the top of the hill. Almost, I mean, I didn't see anything inside. It almost looked like it was abandoned or something, but I mean, see what I'm saying? But um, this part is filmed inside. Yeah. So the house at the end of the film Correct. is this house. Right. All the interiors of the house is this house. We had confirmation from the Bruce, for, Bruce, the former owner's brother. Right. That definitely was the interior. He said that right in there was the couch that Tim Thomerson was was laying on. Right. When you go in to the left. Yeah. And then he said right here on the other side of this first window was the dining room where they had dinner. Correct. And then he said. At the end, just next to that bathroom window, there's a staircase that goes that way, that goes up to that little loft up there. Where Sarah played by, you know, Marcy. Mm -hmm. And that's where um, Caleb would go upstairs to check up on his sister, and she would be gone. And the window's open, and he's looking out, nowhere to be in sight. Mm -hmm. So now we're here at the famous hangar from Near Dark, and I'm with my buddy Larry Bartels, who actually worked on the film. I sure did. And so tell us, what did you do on this film? I was Bill Paxton's uh, double. His, his, uh, his double for the whole film. Correct. Yeah. That is correct. I was what? his double, did a little bit of stunts. Yeah. Driving on a scene with the station wagon, kind of was in that that scene right there when it kind of started catching on fire. Mm -hmm. We're fun. gonna go to that location later, right? Oh, that'd be, yeah, yeah, we are. Hell we yeah. Definitely we are. And uh, were you here the night they shot at this location? Yes, there was. I what do you know. remember about that night? I just remember it was a long night. It was <laughs> tired, but went great. Yeah. It went great. And they just drove the old RV into here, spent the night, and this is in Coolidge, uh, Arizona. Yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> Coolidge, Randolph, it's kind of, you know, the outskirts of Coolidge. As you can hear, next to a very busy little stretch of road. What'd you say? I said, as you can hear. <laughs> oh, he's got jokes. He, I fell for his joke. Oh, <laughs> man. Um, yeah, well, let's take a closer look at this thing. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's see what we can see. And this is where they would have come in. That says Timberib. The gate, it was actually, you can kind of peek in. Yeah, you yeah, you can. Oh, wow. Now you can actually get, you can see the. No way. Yeah. A lot of stuff in there. Oh, that's awesome. But this is the angle you would have seen it at. Oh, yeah. Right there. Right. Wow. I mean, this is kind of the angle here. I, it looks like this is a different telephone pole. As in the film, it looks like the telephone pole's kind of in front of the corner of the building a little bit. Right. But you can still see that sort of power box there on the wall. Yep. That's still there. Yep. So now we're in Huntington Park. This is on Pacific Boulevard. For some reason, they shot everything in Arizona, but they shot this scene here where Caleb's walking down the street, starting to feel the effects of, I don't know, turning into a vampire. So you walk in this direction and you may notice it then pans and you'll see the Warner Theater and it happens to be on the marquee, Aliens is playing. You know, just there's that Catherine Bigelow connection there and 
obviously most of the cast of Aliens is in Near Dark. Two years later, Near Dark director Catherine Bigelow ended up marrying Aliens director James Cameron. Anyway, the Warner Theater is still here. The Pep Boys is now a footlocker, but uh, for the most part, it's a very quick scene. Caleb stops right about, I would say, stops right about here, uh, more on the sidewalk, and he looks up. And he sees the bus depot sign. Now, that bus depot sign wasn't actually there. That was at a different location that they cut into the film. Should have been where this Denim Plus place is, but it isn't anymore. Never was. I believe the interior of the bus station was a set, but I haven't confirmed this. If it does exist, I have no idea where. Now this famous shot here on the top of the hill, this was shot at a movie ranch in Santa Clarita, California. Possibly Sable Ranch, I'm not exactly sure which one, there's several in the area. But they built this entire bar just to burn it down. Yes, they actually did burn it down to the ground. Now you can tell by looking around the area the hills and dirt roads and everything, this is very typical for Santa Clarita. This was also another set, the Hideaway Motel, that they pretty much destroyed as well, with gunfire and vans busting through it, in and out, as you see right here. I mean, if you look at it, it doesn't really look like a motel, these little tiny shacks, I don't know, pretty small. If that's a motel room, it's pretty damn tiny. But anyway, they destroyed this. And then the last motel that they go to, I believe might be an existing set. I don't know where, still in the same area, general area out in Santa Clarita somewhere, but I do not know where the Godspeed Motel is located and if it's a set that is still standing today. Um, you had mentioned something about uh, the scene where he comes over the hill there by the railroad track. You said that something about a scrap metal guy had put something up. As you came over the railroad tracks uh, on Coolidge Avenue, uh, the city of Coolidge had a main, has a maintenance yard, but then that next block was a, a second-hand dealer and a scrap iron yard and a I don't remember a Penny's Cafe and an old bar. Mm -hmm. This is the hill where Adrian Pazdar comes riding over. And this is also where the semi truck drives over the hill. And they head in this direction That's towards correct. the town. Right. And they, they put some fronts up, make it look like a barber shop or whatever. But it was just a, a petition that laid up against the front of the building. Gotcha. Across the street was a Mona's bar mm -hmm. and there was a grocery store there. So this is the intersection where the explosion happened, right, right there. So you're saying they had built some... There was a grocery store here. Okay. And there was a bar across the street that walked. That might be where the killer was. Across the street right here uh -huh. was Penny's Cafe. Right where that lot is? Yes. Okay. That building was here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember you talking about that. That looks that new. There, where that Jeep is, there were yeah. several buildings in there. Okay. And that's where the barber front, uh, that petition was put up for the barber shop. It wasn't a real barber shop, no, it was okay. fake. Yeah. And that was over where that, that car that car that is pulled out, yeah. Huh. That definitely helps us a little more. Thank you, sir. You bet. I mean, if you, if you think in reality, as long as he was on the top of the truck and everything, they right. would have drove two, three miles. Oh, yeah. You know, but they're really on this one little stretch of road right here, which is only a few hundred feet. So they just keep showing the same thing over and over again. Right. With the exception of the insert shots of Adrian Pazdar in the cab and and uh, Bill ripping out parts of the engine, which you said was shot at Raleigh Studios yeah, was, in L.A., right? Yeah, it was filmed at Raleigh Studios. 
So what do you remember about that night? First of all, I remember it was cold and not hot like it is now. <laughs> um, you had the semi truck come up here and they set it off, the whole thing detonated. Yeah. Everything. I mean, it was just the biggest explosion I've ever seen working on film. Do you remember where you were standing when it happened? Pretty much on this corner right over here. You think you were down that way? Yeah, I was a little more right over here on this corner. Right over here. Uh huh. We stood there, everybody stood back. We had to be a certain distance yeah. from the semi truck when that thing blew up. So, and again, like I was saying, it literally melted the road and made a hole in there. Wow. Into that. Little does this truck know that a truck just like his blew up right about where he is right now. <laughs> Oh, that one made it though. That one survived. Well, he got lucky, didn't he? He got lucky. Yep. He did. So basically, this one stretch of road here from South Pacific Street, which is just beyond the railroad tracks, on West Coolidge Avenue to South Main Street, where the explosion took place, this is where everything happens in this little town. All these scenes you're seeing here all take place on this little stretch of road right here. And that's it. They just keep shooting it from different angles, back and forth, back and forth, and that is all there is in this little area. Unfortunately, because all these buildings have been torn down, that nothing looks the same. It really took some going back there two years in a row to figure it out. And I still didn't even figure it out until I was in the editing process to really get it all dialed in. Now see this building, that's the only one you still see. Look, you can see it right here when Caleb is running with his sister. You can see it right there. And that's it. The last building left on that block from the film. Everything else is either torn down or brand new. Now we're going to head to another location. If May will get in the damn car. We're now on Valley Farms Road. This is the famous explosion scene. It's right here. This is it. Right here is where it went down. Car's coming, so it's not getting ran over. Right. <laughs> Might be the end of the scene. Yeah. So you were actually in the station wagon. Yeah, I was in the station wagon. I was in the driver, uh, not the driver's side, but the passenger side. So you were doubling Jeanette Goldstein yeah, for that I was, scene then. Because yeah. you're such a girly man. This oh, is yeah. really girly. You got, you got the, the hair. hair. You got the hair and all that. You got the hair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. anyhow, right about here is roughly where the car turned around in this area and then headed this way. Correct. So let's go take a look at that. All right. So Jenny Wright would have jumped out right around here somewhere. And you right. said that the stunt woman broke her ankle, huh? Right, right. Jumping out of that back of the station wagon. Wow. Now on the second take. You Correct. Said, yeah. Correct. I guess they decided to keep that one. Right. <laughs> I think that's the one that really felt realistic. Now couple things you notice here is when they turn around you can see that little pole off to the right you can see that in the shot these giant new poles these new high-powered ones weren't here back in the day but these the smaller ones these were here right but that but that little one that's over there right so this is where they turned around and they pursued Jenny Adrian Pazdar and his little sister down this direction. Right. Now, something you'll notice is the sign up here. You recall, you remember the sign specifically. Oh, very, well. very well. The one that says, do not enter when flooded. Correct. And you can see it. it. It's hard to make out. You can see sort of the silhouette of the sign in the movie. Right. But you can also see the triangle shaped sign just in, behind it as Jenny and them are running past. Right, and then they shoot the other way if you see them running. So you can see the back of the sign. Yeah. I believe, based on 
the position of telephone poles and everything, Homer would have probably blown up right about here. That's about right. I think this is this is the spot. Maybe here. it was right there. Here, hold that for a second. Okay. Let's let's get me a. I believe he would have been like this. It's kind of like he's taking a dump. He's right. Like, right. Give me a second. Okay. Mm. Hold that. Hold on. Boom. That was it. Yeah. Right here. That was it. That's the spot right there. Actually. Poor Homer. Poor Homer. Yep. So here's the signs that they run past. that are kind of silhouetted. Now, the big, the dead giveaway, other than the fact that you were here, because right. you you know worked on the movie, so you know this is the road, but other than these signs, this one and this one up here, if you see when uh, Adrian Pazdar and them think they're gonna get ran over by Jesse, right. you can see the hills in the distance. You can see those hills behind them, yep. and you can also see that concrete, that's like a little uh, irrigation uh, thing that goes under the, the road over there. Right, right over you there. You can see that in the background as well. Correct. The car would be coming at them from this direction. Correct. So that's, you can kind of make out those hills in the background behind them. Right, which would be the Superstition Mountains. Superstition Mountains. Yeah. And right up here, we get to the spot where the car blew up. Okay, so we're guesstimating it's probably right about here where the car pulled off and blew up. Right, that's about right. Right about here. Yep. See the back of the so, sign, oh yeah, you see the back of the sign and the car blows up. <laughs> And actually, as you said, it blew up these, hear that, hear those power lines that suddenly got loud? It's like they knew right. we're filming them. That's probably um, Those power lines ignited and the whole, you said all the power went out in the town. Yeah, oh yeah, power went out everywhere. Nobody was happy with Near Dark that lived in Coolidge that night. Okay, the main purpose of coming to Arizona again a year later is this location behind me. Far off the road, out here. By the plane. This is supposed, supposedly, this is the exterior of Caleb's house. So we're gonna head in there, hopefully don't get run out, but this is supposedly the exterior of Caleb's house. We know 100% the interior is down the road a ways, but we believe this is the exterior. Right. We're gonna go and check it out, fingers crossed, hope that they're nice, we'll see what happens. I think it's actually that other road on that side is the road where he comes in. That makes more sense. We're kind of coming the back way here. Uh, Which way? Straight? I can't tell. Straight? Well, we'll go straight. Okay. This is it. I can't really make anything out yet as we get close enough. I just put on the back side. Yeah, I'll know when I get close enough to it and see. There was no no trespassing signs anywhere. Correct. And the gate was open. So let's see what happens. Welcome us to go check it out. Do you see any cars or anybody that looks like they're they're here? I see an old broken down truck. Um, I don't see any other vehicles yet. Might be able to go right. Oh shoot, that one shed right there that's facing us with the, the thing open, that looks like where they did the transfusion. Right. Right here, you see the one? Yeah, right there, yeah. it is. That's it. I don't think anybody, this looks abandoned. I don't know. Yeah, it well, does. Abandoned, but they got crops down. Yeah, so somebody has to live. Oh, that is the house, dude. 
Yes, yep. that yep. is the house, 100%. Rock and roll. The one in the back. Yep. That is it. Dude, this is totally where yeah. he gets the transfusion right, right here, right here. That's it. For sure. All right, let's go see if... No way. The stump is still in there. <laughs> no, it looks the same. Yeah, it does. I don't, I don't think it, I think this is like full on a band. Dude, this is it. There it this is. This is it. This is a thousand percent it. We found it. No way. Can we jump out? Huh? Can we jump out again? Yeah, I think so. And over there is where he showed her the horses? Yep. Yep. Right there. All right. I, I don't think anybody lives here anymore. This is crazy. This is the house. This is Caleb's house right here. This is nuts. Exterior here, interior the airport. Interior down down the road a couple miles. Right. Wow, what a trip. That is so crazy. Wasn't she over here in the swing? The swing would have been, the swing probably would have been right here. The way they shot this, they made it look like this house had a second story. See that little window at the top? They're trying to make you think that's the, the girl's room, that small little peak there. But this house doesn't have a second story, unlike the house they used for the interiors. As you can see, everything matches up perfectly. This porch is just falling apart, though. The whole house is falling apart. When we first got there, we didn't know if someone lived there. But as we got closer, it was clearly abandoned, as you see here. As far as the the interior of this one, completely different. I don't think... Anybody home? Hello? Hello? kitchen yeah I'm not gonna go in this this is pretty nasty and it just looks like tetanus yeah that's, yeah, that's why I'm <laughs> stand back and stand. yeah like I mean this is just tet this is tetanus city right here this is definitely the spot. This was the transfusion room. That's crazy. Holy shit. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Right here on the table is where he got the blood transfusion. This is crazy. Wow, what a trip, man. This is nuts. <laughs> I didn't expect to, to get in here, that's for sure. I can imagine my loudest scares. Daddy? Yeah, but this is a thousand percent it. Yep. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, that's crazy. And I think, who knows which direction that one scene is shot in. It could be those mountains over there, it could be those over there. I think it's I think it's those yeah, it's that you see yeah. that you see behind Tim Thomerson when he's talking to the cops. Is this the road right here? That's four hours and nine minutes ago. Meaning if they're on the highway at a steady fifty five. Yeah. Yeah, they were probably standing over here. Yeah. Get this shot, get that shot. Yeah. Let's go. Nice. Wow. That is so freaking cool. Yeah. 
he looks sick. What'd you say, darling? Look! But yeah, there was this in the background here. Yeah. Was was those hills behind Tim Thomerson. He's talking to the cop. So it's probably this field right here that Caleb is actually walking through when yeah. it was all dirt. Yeah. Not the other field that we thought. Because there's a there's fields like this everywhere around here. And the one over by the interior house looks just like this as well. Honestly, they're so identical with roads going around them the pickup shot with the rv could have been there but it's more more than likely here because in that shot right you here. don't see the houses oh because you see the big berm behind it yes, huh that's exactly what you see yeah yep you're right i think you're right i think it comes around here and grabs him and takes yeah. off in the, that direction again right yep but this is definitely the road here where caleb uh is coming up after May jumps out of the car and she kind of starts running down this road or whatever. We'll go look at the uh, where the horses were. Wow, this is crazy. So when Caleb tries to impress May, brings over to see the, the horses, would have been over in this area. But, yeah, I believe this is it. Amazing. And I have to give complete 100% credit to Paul Hollinshead for finding this location. I don't know how he did it. He won't tell me, but he is a bit of a maestro with the locales. He's a, a friend in need and a friend indeed. Or I guess I'm the friend in need and he's the friend indeed. I don't know. But thanks again, Paul, you rock. And of course, thanks to my buddy Larry over here. Could any one of these be Caleb's truck? I don't know. I doubt it. But the one that looks the most like it is this one here. So. This is awesome. I'm stoked. Mission accomplished. So, that's the episode, kids. We waited a whole year to come back because I wanted to get it right. Because I don't half-ass shit, all right? I wanted to get it right. I knew that this house existed somewhere. The exterior, the interior, almost had us fooled, the interior location, but no. This is the exterior, the horse stables, the shed where they did the transfusion. This is the house where Jenny and Caleb have their like chat out here. This is, this is it. This is Mecca. This is near dark Mecca. And I'm glad you came with me, Larry. Thank you. Appreciate your help. And tell them again where they can see your channel. Here's Self Adventures, right? Right there. Here. Wow, look at that font. It's a nice font. Anyway, hope you had a good time. See you on the next one. Be yourself. Adventures. wondering, Sean, how do we get merch? How do we get t-shirts? How do we get Horrors Hollow Ground stuff? How do we get Thing with Two Heads stuff? How do we get blankets? You want a onesie for a baby. Some people might even want Hollywood's Hollow Ground stuff. The collection with Sean Clark, nobody wants to wear that as a shirt. Anything that they'll slap the logos on, you want to be able to get it, right? So if you go to tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction, I think that's it. 
yeah, tpublic.com tpublic backslash user backslash malfunction. You want shirts, you want hoodies, you want things like that because you dig it. tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for supporting the channel. The more we grow this thing, the more content we can bring, the more stuff we can share with you guys. That's what it's all about, man. Being a community, like-minded people, into the same shit, rock and roll.